Hello everyone, this is Dr. Susan Brown at the Center for Better Bones. Today I'm going to take a couple minutes and talk about strength training. In fact, this is the topic that Gina discussed in the Exercise Evolution channel this week. So I'm going to amplify a little on this. As we age, we lose a lot of muscle and you can see you can see this chart, how the process happens. There's a thing called sarcopenia, that's loss of muscle. I wrote a blog on it recently, a very nice blog you're going to see. You go from sarcopenia, losing muscle, to losing strength. Have any of you noticed? It's like harder to open those jars, harder to do the things you used to do, a loss of power, and then eventually frailty and disability. I've seen many people who were incapacitated not because they broke their bones and they were even hunched over but it wasn't because of fractures it was because of muscle weakness so it's really important that we want to keep our muscles strong lifelong and I'm going to tell you one really big secret that there's such a close link between muscle size and strength and bone that the Koreans are now maybe even bypassing bone density tests and looking at muscle size I personally believe that's a great index of strength is the muscle strength, the power, and the muscle size. So who's at risk for sarcopenia, for loss of muscle mass? Well, actually, it's interesting. In a sense, everyone is at risk because as we go from 35 to 85, the average woman is going to lose 45% of her muscle mass. That would take many people into sarcopenia and 45% of her bone mass. So for everyone with age, it's it is a question of maintaining enough muscle mass to be really strong and do everything you want to do. There's some very interesting fun tests to see how much muscle strength you have. One is this called sit and stand test where you actually sit in a chair and you, and you jump up and you see how many times you can sit and come up in a minute. We had some fun in the office doing this. We got the 50 times and that was pretty good. I hear there's some athletes that can get the 75. Somebody even rumored a 100, but I don't know. So you might sit down at home, get a little stopwatch, see how many times you can sit and stand within one minute. It's a great aerobic exercise, but it also measures the strength of the legs. Another great way to measure strength are these little hand meters. In fact, these are used in research to see the strength of the muscle of the arm and actually the strength of the wrist, the strength of the hand grip is a good predictor of other body strength. I was at a party recently, I sent this around, we all measured ourselves and uh, I didn't come up as good as I should so I have to work more on this but if you, the measurement of the grip strength is a very important measure that reflects spinal density and total body strength. Um, used in many studies We've linked people, I think, on, a, on the Better Bone Shop. You can find some links to get these meters on Amazon if you want. And, of course, then there's these really simple uh, strengtheners, you know, these strength, grip strengtheners. Uh, it's a great idea when you're sitting around just reading or relaxing to, to work on building those muscles. So there's several ways to test. You might have fun with a sit and stand test or get yourself one of these grip meters. It's such an important question, this question of losing muscle mass, because people become often, uh, often they can't get up. I knew, I knew a woman who was 85, she could not get up. She couldn't stand up by herself. Now, her bones were okay, but she couldn't stand up because of muscle weakness. You don't want to end up like that. So you want to be really careful to do an alkaline diet. A hidden secret is that just like chronic low-grade metabolic internal acidity causes a loss of bone, it also causes a loss of muscle because the body is forced to break down muscle to get out actually ammonia, which is very alkalizing. The body cannot stand to be acid because you will die quickly. And the body's happy to sacrifice both bone and muscle to neutralize those acids. We also must have adequate protein. And what's really clear to now and what the researchers are talking about a lot is that older people are not getting enough protein. Perhaps even one gram or even a bit more than that, maybe one and a half gram per kilo. For many people, the, we've always said 50, 60 grams of protein, many people need more. And as people get older, they tend to eat less protein. We, of course, need lots of fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds, enough to alkalize. But if you're into strength training, if you get to strength training, you want to pay attention because you want to have some protein right after you do the strength training. Even if you go to the gym and do some simple strengthening exercises, take a little protein. Maybe you have a hard-boiled egg, a little tuna, a little cheese a protein drink, 
because you want to have those amino acids ready right after you exercise. And you also want to rest enough. As I was mentioning, I stress the muscle, I tell the muscle, I tear the muscle down in essence, and the repair comes in the rest. So you want to rest to perhaps three days between your exercise. We're going to be talking a lot about strength training in the exercise evolution. I hope you join us on our channel there. What's very clear is that bone mass is very much tied to muscle mass. You build muscle, you're going to build bone. So I was interested in kind of listing for you some simple supplements you can use if you aren't already on board with our Better Bones program, supplements to help build muscle mass as well as bone mass. Of course, you want a great multivitamin and mineral. We have a wonderful one in the Better Bones site. You want particular amino acids like leucine. Leucine is a rate limiting amino acid for both muscle and bone. I use it myself and I use it with some of the clients. It's really interesting that the drug companies have now invented a little combo to maintain muscle mass as we age. And what that combo includes is athazanthine, this product from algae. They maybe do like 12 milligrams, some tocotrienols, which are a particular form of vitamin E maybe even 10 or 15 milligrams. I like to get about 120 and some zinc, maybe six to 10 milligrams. Now you're going to get the zinc in the multi, but you're probably not going to get tocotrienols, athazanthin, and leucine unless you really make a special effort. So just keep in mind, there's protocols in addition to eating more protein and alkalizing certain nutrients that can be a big help. And it's kind of fun to see just how strong can I maintain myself as I go along trick is we have to we have to exercise to do it so just to say maintain muscle maintain bone in the future I'm going to be talking to you about and we're going to look carefully at how much we can predict the likelihood of fracture by muscle mass I think it's very important and I think it's becoming clear every day there is immense amount of new research I'm going to try to present it to you every couple days here on Facebook just know that at the retreat we've got coming up we're going to be talking about all the new research, plus we're going to be putting together the program for every individual. We hope you'll join us. We have fun at these retreats, and we're all about creating community and empowering women to take charge of their bone health, their muscle health, their total health. Been fun being with you all. We'll talk to you real soon.